The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. Big morning. We got PPI out this morning. We got bank earnings. We got markets right now. S&Ps positive by one point. You see the on the chart. We were down to about 47.90 overnight. You were up to a high at about 4 a.m. Eastern time of 48.20. We're right back near the close today's action and that's after you had the S&P trade down to a low of about 47.74 yesterday just prior to noon eastern time before you got that acceleration higher and we're almost sitting right at the highs right now of 48.16 positive by one point in the S&Ps. NASDAQ you're positive by six. You were above 17,000 yesterday. You made your way down to almost 17,750 and you see we are basically finishing right where you got that acceleration to the three o'clock highs and the NASDAQ 100 at 16,973. The Dow rolling over to negative territory. As I mentioned, you got bank earnings in here. Okay, that's going to matter. Russell, on the flip side of that, excuse me, you're positive by 13 points. That's 7 tenths percent. In positive at night. What happened to Bitcoin? What happened? I thought that the ETF went live and you hit 49,435. How did this thing sell off? Be careful in Bitcoin, folks. We've seen it happen before on my chart yesterday. Why not? Let's jump to it. We pulled up when futures went live, when the wild, wild west turned into a regulated environment. Man, can you believe that futures have been going on since 2017, folks, December of 2017? But if you remember when futures went live at 20,000, it was a one-way trip down to 3,000 over the next 12 months. That cleared the way for the real acceleration. We've had quite a buildup coming into the expectation that the ETFs go live. They do go live. We reach almost 50,000. We've backed off a bit. Longer term, yeah, I think Bitcoin's in a good spot. Shorter term, boy, you got a lot of optimism built up when you just went from 27 to 50, uh, to almost 50,000. Imagine the traders in there. Are you holding on for dear life? Are you hodling? Um, maybe you are. But I bet there's some that are saying, you know what, maybe I take some profits and re-enter at a more affordable price at some point. Bitcoin off 500 bucks after the pullback yesterday. You're now about $4,000 off of the highs of Bitcoin, 49435 We jump to crude. We'll jump to the headlines, but things escalating regarding the Red Sea. You got crude hitting 7525 We've backed off a bit. We're at 743 That's a 30-minute chart. You take a look at the daily. This thing's just been chopping around between 70 and 75 and remarkable to see that is for basically the last six weeks or so, right? You enter that area at the beginning of December. It's about the middle of January. Just been chopping around. We're pushing the higher bound of that consolidation area crude up $2 on the session. A dollar from the highs. Expect some volatility on crude today. Expected it over the weekend. Gold contract. There's your Gold up to 2017 yesterday. You're up to 2061 right now. If you haven't tried out the gold report, folks, it's a great time to do it. It comes with a 30 day money back guarantee, like all of our newsletters do. You got volatility. You got mornings that you wake up. Gold can move, as we know. And this morning, you wake up. Gold is up $41.50. You're up to 2060 on the session right now. We jump to notes and bonds. We got a lot to get to, man, right? Just even the market wrap up. It's always interesting when you got a lot of action, makes the shows very easy, of course, to go over all we got going on. Here's your 10 year. What do we have going on? We got a little bit of higher price and lower yield. But so much for a percent handle. We're at 3.97%. A little bit of a soft PPI number. PPI does not include housing. One of the big components of CPI was housing yesterday, right? Not a component of price indexes. Nonetheless, you get actually a decrease in PPI. And we get a little bit of data for everybody. So interesting how it comes, right? Only 20 was removed from the CPI yesterday, which comes in hot. The PPI comes in soft. It's it's just the tail of the tape, as we've seen recently. Um, very difficult to meander this market when you get 
data in although there are clear signs in one way or another there's always some type of conflicting data that almost gives both sides an argument right yesterday cpi is hot you say inflation's here to stay it's sticky while today ppi is soft you say producer prices are coming down cpi is going to come down and inflation is really present when you talk about shelter and other components i mean it's just uh, remarkable how that continues but the market shakes it off and um holds up relatively well as we're just negative by one point right now and you catch a little bit of an acceleration from that 7 a.m. Eastern time low on the S&Ps and we got yields at 3.97%. Here we go as we come into a really important earnings, right? The economy seems to doing, be doing extremely well. The only question right now is how is the inflation battle going, right? The economy is doing great, man. How, how is the inflation battle going? Because it seems like things are getting a little sticky as of yesterday's number. We'll see where we go from there. But as we've been talking about on this program, if you've been listening, some of the comps that we'll be dealing with for CPI, especially the next few months, are going to be a lot friendlier on the yearly basis than the one that we got yesterday. Let's jump into it. Where do we kick things off? We'll kick it off with PPI. So you're supposed to see a rise, and we saw a decline. <sighs> Got to love that, right? Now, it always does not transfer through to consumers, as in what producers are paying does not always necessarily transfer through to consumer prices, but I'm sure I don't have to explain that in theory, all of those are related. If you're paying more as a producer, you're gonna try and charge more to the consumers on the back end of that. The producer price index for final demand decreased 0.1% last month, excluding food and energy, the core PPI, little changed for the third month. Little changed for the third month, right? From a year earlier, it was up 1% and core was up 1.8 the smallest since the end of 2020. Friendly numbers, to put it lightly. Uh, and yeah, as they mentioned, they followed the data yesterday that was a little bit bumpy. Prices paid to producers for goods decreased 0.4% in December, with nearly 60% of that reflecting cheaper energy. Services costs, meanwhile, unchanged for the third month. Yeah. So one reason, as they state here, economists at the Fed and on Wall Street parse the PPI report is because several categories, including those related to portfolio management and within healthcare, okay, are used to inform the Fed's preferred inflation measure, the PCE, the Personal Consumption Expenditures, price gauge, okay? So prices for portfolio management and investment advice both spiked while healthcare categories were mostly unchanged. I was listening to them talk about this on Bloomberg this morning, how the cost of trading, the fees, they're going up. What happened to zero dollars, right? I've talked about this before, man. If you're trading options, you better make sure you understand what kind of fees you're paying because I, I if you've kind of been aloof to the fees that are combined for option trading, especially if you're doing any type of decent number, 10, 50, 100, whatever it is, they are extreme, to put it lightly, in terms of how much you're trading, especially if you're trading low-priced options, many of them, um, short-term trading, there are dramatic fees involved in trading. And uh, the brokerage has got to love that they get $0 commissions as the headline out there. But fees are going up. Portfolio management and investment advice. Now, that's not even talking about the fees I'm talking about, okay? But nonetheless, they're going up. We got a lot to talk about. Both folks we haven't gotten into the earnings yet jp morgan crushing it as usual we're coming back with jp morgan and the bank stay tuned folks if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market then rocket equities and options report is a newsletter you should try tommy o'brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps. You're up by three points right now. You're getting a little bit of the opening bell, but we're pushing uh, the pre-market session highs. You were up there at about, let's get the exact, 48.2175. So we're three points away less than now at 48.19 in the S&Ps. We jump to the banks. <clears throat> There's JP Morgan for you. So I wonder if that was the expense side of things when it first, uh, no, maybe that was one of the other banks. That's probably what it was, right? No, that was probably there. Um, nonetheless, you get a spike lower, short-lived, you trade higher. You got JP Morgan trading up more than $3 this morning at one. 173.5. You closed yesterday at 170.30. And let's check out their video game style numbers when it comes to profits, because my goodness, folks, uh, they did have expenses jump. We'll talk about that as well, right? Expenses jumped 29% more than analysts expected. Speaks a lot to what's happening right now, that you can have a company with expenses that are rising 30%, and meanwhile, the equity is going up because they're crushing it when it comes to profits. How does that happen? inflation to a certain degree. What did we just talk about? What's going up? Investment fees to a certain degree, right? Now, Diamond saying inflation may be stickier than investors expect. Well, it may be stickier. It may not. Which one's it going to be? Right? Of course, it may be stickier than investors expect. That's not even a statement. Uh, most profitable year in U.S. banking history. How about that? Right. The banks, man. Seventh consecutive quarter of record net interest income. Wait till you see this one on the chart. Not surprising. Uh, net interest income. That's the difference between what the banks earn on loans and payout on deposits. 24.2 billion 90 days. Might be just more than 90, depending on what three months those are. Uh, the haul for all of 2024 may rise to about $90 billion for J.P. Morgan. Yeah, and so they're confident. Diamond saying that they're confident that, well, the results in 2023 reflect over-earning on both net interest income and credit. They are confident in their ability to continue to deliver, excuse me, to continue to deliver very healthy returns even after they normalize. This is what it looks like on a quarterly basis. The number on the y-axis is billions. 24.05 is what they took in this quarter. They were 22 last quarter. We're just below 22 the quarter before that, you see the acceleration. Now, what is remarkable is that even at a time of very little rates 
in terms of what they had going on, right? Even at a time of, you know, 2020, 2021, when rates were at or near zero, they were still making 13 or $14 billion in net interest income. That is actually more remarkable than what they're doing right now, in my opinion. Yeah, they're, they're video game style numbers, as I say, right? You're making $24 billion in 90 days. But my goodness, it's remarkable to think how much they were making when rates were so low, still able to make so much money when in a very low interest rate environment on their assets. Okay, we get into some of the expenses here. So they had a $2.9 billion charge tied to the failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature. They're going to be just fine, man. The big got bigger and the small got smaller, man. We saw how the big banks went out when there was a flight to safety there. The FDIC levied a special assessment to backstop uninsured depositors at those firms after they collapsed last year. J.P. Morgan warned it would take the charge, which previously estimated at around $3 billion. So it comes in at 2.9. Not bad. Net interest income. Oh, no. Excuse me. Pretty close, right? Uh, they're talking expenses. They spent more than analysts estimated in the fourth quarter as Diamond warned that inflation could last longer than many investors anticipate. Expenses climbed to $24.5 billion, a jump of 20 nine percent now beyond that special assessment okay higher compensation higher compensation right the outlook for adjusted expenses this year is about 90 billion dollars well that's what they're going to make in that interest income so they're all set man you get into trading markets revenue climbed slightly Beating expectations, 8% gain in fixed income traders notched more than offsetting the 8% drop on the equity side. Investment banking revenue climbed 13%, but below estimates as a beat in equity underwriting was more than offset by misses in debt underwriting and advisory. You had charge-offs of $2.2 billion, and they got uh, $743 million in net investment securities losses. Nonetheless, you jump over to J.P. Morgan. They are trading higher at 173.60. Seems like they started that earnings call almost an hour ago, so probably no surprises coming out of the woodworks just yet as J.P. Morgan delivers yet again. So they're going to open at 173.50, which, uh, does that put this thing at an all-time high? Puts it at an all-time high, man. Why not? J.P. Morgan looking to open at an all-time high. And that all-time high, we just pulled it up. Is it 173.50? 173.38. We're just above that number. All right. We jump around. Where are we off to next? Let's see. What are we, yeah, let's talk a little Bank of America. So Bank of America, they're actually a little bit lower this morning. Just remarkable how J.P. Morgan continues to crush it when the expectations are high and these banks continue to struggle. Uh, Bank of America, you're down about a dollar this morning. That's going to be almost a 3% hit. You're trading at 32.17. You jump over to Bank of America. It was the bond traders um, post a surprise drop as profits slump. There it is. Net income falls by 56%, double the, the decline analysts expected. So you got that same FDIC special assessment. Okay, we knew that was coming, though. Remember, J.P. Morgan put out that they thought that was going to be $3 billion. It actually came in at 2.9. Over here on Bank of America, they have a $1 billion special assessment, a $1.6 billion tied to the finance industry shift away from the London interbank offered $1.6 billion just to shift away from that benchmark. Remarkable, right? The money they're dealing with, man. Uh, Brian Moynihan, our expense discipline allowed us to continue investing in growth initiatives, strong capital and liquidity levels, position us well to continue to deliver responsible growth in 2024. Fixed income, currencies, and commodities trading fell 5.8% to $2.1 billion in the four clients grapple with a period of continued high interest rates and geopolitical tensions. So it is interesting when you look at J.P. Morgan, okay, because what happened with J.P. Morgan? There was an 8% gain in fixed income traders, more than offsetting the 8% drop on the equities side. But Bank of America, fixed income, currencies, and commodities, you combine it all falling 6%. So quite the divergence, man. You got winners and losers, to say the least. Um, we trading in credit partially by improved trading in mortgages and municipals is what they're talking about there. Yeah, their net, net interest income falling 5% to $13.9 billion. And the uh, analysts were looking for a 5.1% drop. So they're going to pull back. I mean, remarkable when you look at that because J.P. Morgan, they don't have a drop, man. They don't have a drop at all. 
they just went in the last 90 days from 22 and change to 24 and change. Yeah. They got 1.05 trillion at the end of the fourth quarter. You know what they don't include in this article, which everybody always loves? Maybe somebody's got it for me in the den, because I know we've talked about this number before. What do they got in hold to maturity securities that's the loss right now? Is it like $100 plus billion somewhere on their balance sheet? I think it is. Uh, they're one of the banks that will be helped out immensely if you get that pullback in rates. So keep your eye on that one, man. Bank of America shares? Yeah, they got some issues when you're talking about hold to maturity securities in a fashion but guess what over the next six 12 months you're going to see a reprieve there coming down the line you talk about a reprieve markets coming into the opening positive territory we're pushing 48 24 pre-market session highs we're coming back for the opening bell don't go away folks tfnn has just launched their new trading room the tiger's den hosted at discord tfnn has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours and now they are expanding their reach with the tiger's den available to all tigers and tigresses for just one dollar for the year there's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders in the tiger's den you can look over the shoulders of tom o'brien and the other T. FNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of tfnn.com currencies commodities and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe which is why it's a great time to try out teddy kegstat's tiger forex report teddy kegstat breaks down the forex markets every monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures forex stocks and options Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And we got a soft PPI number. We got some strong numbers out of JP Morgan. And we got green across the board, man. We got the S&P points on the opening bell at 4830. You got the NASDAQ 100. We're up by 37 points, above 17,000, 17,001. You got the Dow up 60 points. 
we get back that entire loss, man. The Dow just traded down 350 points and got it all back in the span of, what, three and a half hours prior to the market open? Woof. And the Russell plowing higher by 1.2% to 1992. You jump over to Bitcoin. Scaling some of those losses, um, gains you had yesterday, we're off by $400 on the session right now. Trading at 45910 You jump over to crude. We'll talk about this coming up in terms of the geopolitical tensions, ratcheting up in the Red Sea. Crude up $2.34 right now. you got the gold contract up $44, $44 at 2063 Let's jump over to the dollar index. Dollar index, right? There's your action, man. Dollar just dropped from 102.60 to 102.20, just like that. In the same time, you jump over to yields. Yeah, higher price, lower yield. So it's remarkable how they're all coming into fruition. We have right now, <clears throat> excuse me, the 10-year now under 3.95, 3.946. So we have lower yield. We have a weaker. We have the market loving that. And we have the price of commodities loving that when you're priced in that weaker dollar. It makes sense, right? The price of gold is going up when it's priced in dollars because the dollar is weakening. So you want to pay for that commodity in a currency that is weakening, you're going to have to pay more of that currency. It's so important in terms of how that all shakes out. I know most of you understand that, but check out that gold report if you haven't, folks, um, because we got some volatility, to put it lightly. Okay, let's jump back to some of the banks and see how they open. Bank of America, you open up down 1.5%. You jump over to JP Morgan, you're up by 2.8%. Which is City, we're going to talk about in a moment. City, they're a story of eliminating expenses. Market loves that, man. They're knocking out 20,000 rolls. You hear that? 20,000. We'll talk about them in a second. Wells Fargo, off by 1.7%. We're going to talk about Delta out with their numbers, down 4.8% percent this morning for Delta. We got to jump to Microsoft shares because folks, that is now the biggest company in the world. It crept up on me. Didn't even realize they were so close, man. The creep, the creep is real. Now, I, did Apple get it back? They're in a duel, man. What are we at? Apple, 2.897 as of right now. Microsoft, where are we at? 2.864. Apple's got it back. They're on the charge. They're up by four tenths percent. They're ahead of Microsoft, only up by two tenths percent, um, but absolutely remarkable that Microsoft now on the heels of OpenAI, right? You talk about getting it done, man. That was a $10 billion investment they made on the get-go, and they're now the biggest company in the world, valued at $2.9 trillion. They're basically both $2.9 trillion companies. Remarkable, to put it lightly. We jump over to Tesla shares, off 2%. Continuing the slide to 222, you do get a little bit of a pop on the open, and we jump to Boeing shares. What have we been talking about? What did we say all week? 220. What did we say? 220, right? 220. Where are we at? 220 right now on Friday. And you're probably making it down to 210, folks. You're probably going to fill that gap. That gap gets filled at about 214.82, okay? So you're at, at 220, and on a weekly basis, yeah, the bottom of that bar, when you go back to that same daily that I just showed you the gap taking place, the bottom of that bar is at about 210.81. But it made sense you were coming back to at least this area that you had so much resistance at. That could potentially be an area of support. You're now back at that 220 area. But nothing preventing this thing going back to 200. They got some problems, man. The story out there, to, why not? Let's jump over to this one. The FAA. It seems like too little too late. And why is this stuff always take until like pieces of the planes are just popping out? FAA to increase oversight of Boeing. The regulators are going to audit the production line and look at suppliers. It's remarkable that with what's been going on with Boeing, somehow the production line, I mean, doesn't the FAA audit production lines anyway? It seems like the FAA needs a big, long look, period. Uh, mulling, third-party oversight of Boeing quality control. You better believe it, man. They've got doors popping out in the middle of the sky because bolts are loose, okay? You know, the speech that that CEO made, it was it was empowered. It, it was powerful, uh, but I don't believe it. He's, he makes a lot of money to be in that role, man, uh, um, and to make that speech. Remember that, all right? So, yeah, regulators are conducting an audit of the production line and suppliers. They're going to increase monitoring of so-called in-service events on the MAX 9. It's going to consider bringing on a third party to oversee the inspections and quality control. They're going to consider it. I mean, that seat, man, you know, pretty remarkable. I was reading something last night. And this is something to consider, right? Many times on planes, you got people 
and you do not need to buy a ticket for your I think as long as they're under the age of two. Now, I flew with Tommy when he was two, and no matter what, he was big enough. He needed his own seat, period. Even if they would have let me on the plane without giving him a seat, he needed a seat. It would have been an uncomfortable experience being on without him. But the article was talking about that it's remarkable that somehow we allow parents to sit with their kids on their laps. They might not even be belted in, right? And if that was the case in that seat, that kid gets sucked out of that hole in an instant so if you got small kids on planes especially any age right there's always the and i've done it flying with tommy you know they're jumping around right you, you got to get the belt on they're jumping around make sure they got their belt on folks we've seen what can happen think it's just a miracle that everybody nobody was hurt on that plane when you think about it um but the kids one really got me thinking i got tommy of course it always gets me thinking he's only a few weeks away from being three years old and yeah, strap them down good, man, because you really never know what's about to happen on a plane. It could just be turbulence. That's the most likely thing, right? You're sitting on a plane, you hit a pocket of air, you hit turbulence, the plane dives down for a moment, everybody flies up and hits the ceiling that isn't buckled in. And I digress, uh, but Boeing's got some issues, folks. We talked about at the beginning of the week, and we're right back to 220 right now. Maybe you catch a little bit of relief right now since you're back to that area. Um, but yeah, you're negative by another percent right now on a day where you got positive market action. JP Morgan continuing higher right now. We got the Dow up by 90 points. You got JP Morgan up by 2.7%. Bank of America down by 1.5%, even though they are cutting. And we jumped to City. So City catching a bid up by 2.9%. So they're the best performer right now. And the market loves a good story of layoffs and saving money, man. And that's what's going on here. How about it? They're going to cut 20,000 rolls in a bid to boost returns. They're not boosting growth of revenue, folks. They're boosting growth of profits by saving money. Fixed income trading revenue reaches a low. It's pretty remarkable, right? I mean, kudos to the management team over there, okay? Because any other way this comes down, I mean, imagine these headlines, right? Five-year low in the quarter for fixed income trading. They're going to take a billion in severance. That has to do with it. But if you just had the the results themselves, check out these results. That's the lowest number on the chart, man, since 2018. Okay, they got a problem in terms of revenue, but you know how they're going to fix it? They're going to fix it by getting rid of 20,000 people, man. And it is going to save, uh, let's get the numbers. Here we go. So firm-wide expenses are expected to drop to a range of 51 to 53 billion, okay? They didn't give the exact time frame. They're going to incur about a billion dollars in expenses tied to severance payments. The costs for the year should be about 53.5 to 53.8, but that is already down from 56.4 in 2023. We'll finish this conversation. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. we got the S&Ps up by 18 right now. So finishing up the conversation on Citi before we jump over to Delta that's having a tough morning on the open on some profit concerns because higher costs. Okay, remarkable. The theme coming on. Uh, Citi up by 3%. They are cutting costs, and the market loves that. You jump back to that Citi one for a moment. Quarterly loss, $1.8 billion. How about that, man? Uh, now, that includes a $780 million, $80 million charge tied to the severance the bank offered to employees impacted by the restructuring. They got a $1.7 billion charge to operating expenses in the quarter to cover special assessment to replenish that. That right, JP Morgan came in at about $2.9 billion. Uh, nonetheless, 20,000 rolls, they're cutting. The market loves it. Now, you jump over to Delta, they got issues, man walks back the 2024 profit goal on higher costs and wages, expenses, uncertainty, right? They also purchased 20 wide-body planes from Airbus, Boeing. No, thank you. We'll go with Airbus, says Delta. Can't fault them there. Uh, adjusted earnings. Now, here's the big take on this. Going to be 6 to $7 a year. Ah, excuse me, a share this year. Delta, earnings adjusted about 6 to $7 a share this year. They said that in their statement today, Okay. A term profit target for several years of more than seven dollars, and I'm sure they tried to set the bar low, right? Under promise, over deliver. They said they're going to come in at more than seven dollars. Maybe they saw that as the floor. That is not the floor anymore. Now they're coming in at six to seven dollars, right? Analysts expect six fifty on average in estimates compiled by Bloomberg. So Delta scales it down. Not immune from elevated costs and other challenges plaguing the industry. Supply chain shortages. Increased engine repair times, slow the delivery of some new aircraft, and they're with it. Um, yeah, across the board. So Delta's down almost 6% right now. The forecast took the shine off an otherwise strong quarter. People don't care what you did the last 90 days, man. If you're telling them that over the course of the next year, you're going to have problems living up to the expectations that you have, uh, have given. Yeah, so they're going to purchase 20 A350-1000 aircrafts from Airbus, underscoring the carrier's confidence that strength in overseas travel is going to endure. They're going to get deliveries. They're going to start in 2026, and they signed options to take another 20 wide-body models as well. 2026. They got to make these. They got to make these purchase orders in the beginning of 2024 to hope that you're getting those planes that start getting delivered 24 months later. Whew. Yeah, but the last thing you want to hear, I mean, they, you know, add up all those phrases that I just told you, right? Uncertainty, excesses, profits going down, markets paying attention, man. And you got Delta shares this morning. Down 6.8%, man. 
tough morning for Delta. Let's check around to see those banks how we're trading again on the open. JP Morgan up by 1.8%. You jump over to Bank of America. Down by about three quarters percent for Bank of America. You know, I was looking up. I couldn't find the number. Does somebody have it? Maybe in the den somebody has it. I don't blame um, Bank of America for not publicizing it. But what are they at for hold to maturity securities? Because I'm pretty sure when they release their financials, this comes out. This one from a quarter ago, 131. I knew it was 100 at least. It's at least 100 billion, right? Last quarter, and it shouldn't really change that much, although rates have changed, to put it to, put it, to be fair, they have come down. 131.6 billion is what they had in unrealized losses on their balance sheet for hold to maturity securities as of their last earnings event. So they got some issues, man. But remember, remember that number because that is going to get some help when rates give them some ease on there, right? For sure. You got the S&Ps right now up by 19 at 48.34. We're coming right into all-time highs right now at 48.38. Let's check in on the Microsoft and Apple duel. Microsoft up by four tenths percent. And Apple up by four tenths percent right now. Two great companies, tough to deny that. Okay, what else we got pulled up today as we jump through it? Yeah, we talked about Boeing, right? The uh, FAA is gonna be coming for them, probably a little too late. Boeing down by 1.3%. We check in 219.53 for Boeing shares. And what else we got? Ah, let's talk a little bit of oil, man. This was probably the most tantalizing story overnight. The Houthis filed more ship attacks after the U.S. and the U.K. have airstrikes. Um, they struck targets in Yemen. Okay. And, um, yeah, the shipping industry advises against crossing the Red Sea. I would advise against it as well. Those are usually just private citizens getting paid for a job, folks. Um, I hope they're getting some hazard pay. Iran says strikes to fuel insecurity in the region. Oil topping almost 80 bucks on that news. And yeah, they broke this down in the overnight session. <laughs> I mean, before normal, I'm just cherry picking here, but the area needs to be declared safe and commercial shipping has to decide whether it believes it's safer. I don't think that's happening anytime soon. So I don't know how this plays out, right? Where's the end game on something so simple like this? But are you really able to stop something that is being, that's occurring through basically you know, rebels. Now, Tesla. We got Tesla shares lower today. Their drop on China price cuts and German plant showdown. They trim prices on the Model 3 and the Model Y again. That's after the story from Hertz yesterday, right? Maybe they're just trying to get it all out. Maybe Elon said, listen, put it out right now, man. Can't we can't get worse. Uh, you got Hertz selling all our vehicles. That was the slide yesterday to 227. You open today to 220. You get back some of those losses. We're down by 1.5% on a positive market day. There's your three-year weekly, 223.94, down 326 on the session, down about 1.4%. We started the year at almost 100. You still up 100% on the year, last year that is. So be careful on Tesla shares, man. Extreme volatility in the headlines, just not friendly. 4838 is the high, 4834 right there. Let's check in on yields. We're checking on the dollar. Yeah, it's continuing right now. That's a 15 minute. Let's put it back to a five. Look at this action, man. Look at this action, right? The 10 years at 3.92. 3.92, just like that. Whew. Let's check out the dollar. Oh, man, we're going to get a 101 handle by the time the show's over, folks. And the show's over in about nine minutes. The dollar, 102.10, just like that. We take a look at the daily. Yeah, maybe that was our reprieve. Right? Maybe that was the reprieve. What do we do? We traded from on December 28th about 100 and change. You got up to above 103. And just like that, we've given it back to a certain degree. Let's check in on that gold contract as we've had things skyrocketing. Gold now up $45. $45, 2064 for the price of gold. Check out that gold report, folks. S&P's up about 16. NASDAQ up 64. Dow up 21. All right. And don't forget, folks, we got a long weekend. Uh, we are not going to be here Monday. The market's not going to be here on Monday. The market closed for Martin Luther King Day on Monday. And, uh, yeah, so we'll be closed. We've got a nice long weekend. Always interesting how we get um, the the holidays extra loaded at the beginning of the year because we, we get – MLK Day, you got President's Day, I think it is, in February, is that right? Washington's birthday, then you get Good Friday in March, you get Memorial Day in May, 
And then the rest of the year, you kind of just stuck a bit. You get June 19th, you get July 4th, you get Labor Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, but at the beginning of the year, it feels like, what do we have? We just had a long weekend for Christmas, long weekend for New Year's, long weekend for MLK Day. I'll take it, baby. Close for Monday, but we got one more segment, folks. Stay tuned, and we got live programming all day today. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps holding on to most of those gains. We pull back a few points from the high, but you're up by 15 points. That's three-tenths percent in the positive right now, trading at 48.29. You get the NASDAQ up 52 points above 17,000. You're up by three-tenths percent. Dow only in index in the red. Get back about 100 points of those gains. Uh, as you were all the way up on the opening bell, up to a price of 38,031, we've given back about 110 points in the Russell, man. Russell strong like bull, up by 24 points. That's 1.2%. We check in on Bitcoin, continuing to slide 45,000. Five excellent Bitcoin, man. We've seen this before in terms of any times you've had that big event on Bitcoin that's on the horizon. Usually, uh, it's a scenario of buying the rumor, selling the actual news. And I think we're seeing that again as Bitcoin down 800 bucks on the session right now. You got crude up $2.20. We got to keep our eye on the dollar, man. You're trading commodities, a oh, little bit of a boost there. So we're not getting a 101 handle, I guess, just yet. Dollar saves itself. We're at 102.18. You got the gold contract up $43 at 2006. 
too. And let's check around to some of those equities with their numbers. Yeah, Delta, be careful, man. They're not making as much money as they thought they would, and they really don't have a good answer for that. They're down by 6.3% right now. For Delta, City, on the other hand, they have an answer and are making as much money. But guess what? They're going to cut 20,000 jobs, and that's going to be their solution. The market says we like that solution. We're up by 1.3% today. JP Morgan, they got no problems, man. They do have a pullback, though. Check that out, man. That's probably what's uh, driving some of the Dow action off by a dollar, excuse me, up by a dollar 88, but you just gave up four dollars. What is that? Two and a half percent pullback from where you were at 176 for JP Morgan. We finished out the bank's Wells Fargo down by 1.5 percent right now. Bank of America shares off by about 1.3 percent. Tesla in the news off by eight tenths percent. We check back in on Microsoft and Apple with the dual to be the biggest company in the world. Microsoft up by three tenths percent. Apple up by four tenths percent. Folks, thanks so much for kicking your Friday off right here at TFNN. Have a great long weekend, but before you do, we got live programming coming up. We got our man, Basil Chapman, with the Tiger Technicians Hour coming up. We got our man, Steve Rhodes. We got Fast Market at 12. Harry Pesavento coming up at 1 o'clock. And we got our man, Jacob Shoup, doing an outstanding job. He's filling in for Tom from 3 till 4. My dad will be back on Tuesday, folks. Stay tuned for Basil. He's coming up right now. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody.